Chopping it up with Buck, we're at the Vintage Whiskey and Cigar Bar. I got my man Jay Walker, former college all, Hall of Famer. He, he's always telling me how good he was at Howard. <laughs> former NFL quarterback, and I also have Andre Ware from right down in my hometown of Houston, Texas. Former U of H Cougar, played in the league for a number of years. We all now work for ESPN, so I had to get on these quarterbacks because I'm always talking ball. But these guys know a little ball. How you doing today? <laughs> good, you know? good, man. Glad to be here with two of my favorites at, uh, at ESPN. And we've been around longer than a lot of them. Now we sure managed to, to, to hang around and uh, and do some good things. We, but we glad became, to be here with you guys. We became OGs. Like, <laughs> no, 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 you were OGs. I was saying, look around. I'm like, oh, now you're like my OG. I'm one of the OGs. Like, oh, man. But guys, I mean, that's the thing. You know, usually when I do chopping it up, we just go one-on-one. But I thought this was nice to talk about the quarterback position because – you guys have seen the evolution of the quarterback position when you guys played it. Yeah. Now you call it. And, and it's interesting when I watch the young cats because they don't always know the history. We were talking a little bit earlier about working out with the Oilers and seeing Warren yeah. Moon. But even the guys before that, Doug Williams, you know, Shaq yeah. Harris, all the guys that you know well. Tell us about your experience growing up and playing the quarterback position. Well, I mean, I think, you know, for me it was it, – there were guys like Andre came out ahead of me. So I remember yeah. having a college coach say, man, you can be like Andre Ware. Yeah. Prior to that, it was you could be like Doug Williams. You could be like growing up in L.A., Vince Evans yeah. with USC. Warren Moon, one of the godfathers, Randall Cunningham. So those were those guys. But, you know, I really didn't get it at the time because, yeah. you know, it was like I was just competing with the time I knew. I was like, okay, all I knew was there was a white guy out there. I had to be twice as good. Mm-hmm. And this is in 1988, 89. Yeah, yeah. You know, local schools wouldn't even look at me because of the color of my skin. Yeah. I couldn't well, see. I knew about fish. you from Paul Richardson, who Tebow. I played with at UCLA. <laughs> Tebow. Tebow. Son now is playing, but Tebow was telling us about Jay. I was like, who's this Jay Walker? Yeah, yeah. So Jay's slinging it around. Oh, <laughs> around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it was, it was that evolution. And now, you know, I, I'm glad. The quarterbacks today have it a lot easier that we ever did. We yeah. ever did. But as guys that laid down that foundation, we tried to carry it. And it's a different generation. You can't blame the times change. You know, yeah. my dad used to talk about having to walk 12 miles to go to school. I never had to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So yeah. it evolves that way. So well, what, what about you? Yeah, you, you look at it and, and it's just one of those things where, as I could echo what Jay was saying, when you're in it and you're competing, uh, I think at the time that I was at Houston, I was the only African American quarterback on the on the roster yeah, when yeah. I got there. And so you're competing, and you just, I'm just trying to win the job. Yeah. I didn't really think about it from the standpoint of being the only brother. I was just trying to win the job. Yeah. And then later on, later in my college career, you win a Heisman. They tell you, hey, you're the first black quarterback to win the Heisman. <laughs> I don't know that it settled in then, yeah. but it certainly <laughs> does now. And I know the significance of it. And you start, as Jay mentioned, you start looking around the league and around college football. You hope you had a little bit to do with opening the door for somebody else to kind of step through and made it their path a little bit easier than yours. Follow up on that. I mean, I, I count with the numbers. When I got to the NFL, there were six black quarterbacks in the whole league. The whole league. Yeah. Backups six. and everything. Yeah. Backups, yeah. And, we knew, and we all knew each other. Yeah. And who yeah, they well, were. that's an interesting story. How many times were you told when you played Pop Warner or high school ball or even college that you should change your position? That's a big thing. I got ready to go off to college and thought I'd found a school in going to Houston that was going to give me the opportunity to play quarterback. Well, they were. But I remember working out in the summer back at my high school and not one of the coaches that were that was on the varsity, but one I'd played for in, in uh, as a freshman who asked me if I was ready to switch positions when I got to college. <laughs> oh, wow. And they knew how passionate I was about yeah. playing quarterback, how I, how I strategically went about visiting schools and choosing the school that I was going to go to because I would just want the opportunity to play quarterback. And he hit me with that one one day. And I've always said it during interviews, but I never called his name. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he knew who I was talking yeah. about. And, and those are the things, the micro things that happen that we remember. You mm-hmm. know, you remember a teacher that tells you, hey, it's motivation. Yeah. See, yeah. you yeah. use it as fuel. Yeah. Yeah. You, you use it as fuel. What about yeah. you, Jay? I, uh, school I dreamt of going to, University of Washington. Mm-hmm. You know, because Moon went yeah. there, we're from the same part of LA, and uh, they told me I was going to be a better linebacker than my cousin was. And I never even played defense yeah. at all. 
never played defense. They said, you'll be a better linebacker because, you know, my size. And I, I cried and cried and just, you know, it was motivation. It was motivation. Same similar situation. I grew up wanting to go to Texas because of Donnie Little. Oh, yeah. He was the first African-American quarterback to play at the University of Texas and went to my high school. So my whole plan was to follow in his footsteps. Uh, Texas came in, my high school coach called me in, he says, hey, what position you want to play in college? I'm like, you know, I want to play quarterback. He says, well, the next time that guy from Texas comes in, ask him what he wants you to play. Defensive back. Never backpedaled in my life. I think I know who was recruiting you because they recruited me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say names, but I've said it before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I know who you're talking about. You know, guys, when you think about that, when you get to college and then you have to compete, that's a whole nother situation. Jay, you were fortunate to go to HBCU like Howard, with, but still you have to figure out a way to get to that starting position. What was that like for both of you guys as you got to college? Man, you know, for me, I always knew, and my confidence, you know, they say quarterback's a confident position, right? And, and the one thing, you have confidence in different ways. One thing I always thought, because my baseball background was I've never seen anybody in my life throw a football better than me. Mm -hmm. So that was my comp. So I was like, when it comes to competing, hey, if somebody would have been there and outthrown me, they might have took my heart. Yeah. But I was like, I can throw better than anybody. Yeah. You know, I didn't admit anybody I thought could throw the ball as well as me until I became a pro. Mm -hmm. And so that was a comp say, I'll just let the throwing go. And once I learned the mental aspect of the game, I thought I'd be all right. Yeah, baseball background as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I use tennis to help develop my arm strength, mm. which is a, uh, tell a lot of young kids these days that it's the same throwing motion. I've served a lot, a lot of backhand, so it, it basically builds all the muscles uh, to throw. I do it with my son now as, as a baseball pitcher. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> going there and competing, uh, I just felt like I had to be twice as good as, as everybody else if I was going to get the shot. Knowing I was the only African American kid on the on the on yeah. the uh, on the team at that position, I don't know about Jay, but when I'm competing with you, we're not friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if I'm competing with you at quarterback to win a job, we're not friends until it's over, and I won, then we can be friends. Yeah, yeah. But uh, and if, if somehow I didn't win, you know, win the job, then we probably still weren't friends until I started playing or overtake you at some point. But I I looked at anything I could to to mo motivate myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, I used it, and if we were, I mean, it's checkers, whatever it is, we'll be friends when the game's over, but not while we're competing <laughs> against each other. Yeah, and I, I think we all know how to compete, and but that's the one thing. What what? Who was a coach or influence, influential person that you kept going to when you needed that, hey, you know, you got knocked down here, or things didn't work out for you there. Who were those guys that were influential to both of them? Well, I think back then, because we were working out, we were in the same city, and I looked up to him. First guy to sign, I think, a million dollar contract to play the position, it was Warren. Yeah. And yeah. he just, hey, how do you handle this? How you handle? And he was such a uh, a sounding board. Mm -hmm. that he, he's been he like was, the he, godfather. He, of the he modern, is, and he's easy to approach. Now, yeah. Uh, always has been. We we actually run a foundation together now where we give back to kids that grew up like we did from yeah. single parent yeah. homes, and and so we've had a lot of success doing that the last couple of years, the last three years or so. But he was kind of the the guy I would go to when you, know, you just feel yourself getting frustrated or. You needed somebody to just bounce some ideas off. He always had the right answers. Yeah, yeah. he was he was a pro, pro Warren Moon. I can say yeah. Moonshine as well, but uh, not James Shaq Harris. So Shaq and my father grew up together in Louisiana, and so okay. when, when he was out there playing for the Rams, I always knew who Shaq was. And so he was he was big in my life in terms of telling me you got to compete twice as hard. I hadn't heard that phrase yeah. until I heard it when I was like sixth grade. <laughs> yeah. so I was like, what are you talking about? Man? Twice <laughs> yeah. So I, I would do that. He'd take me to community colleges when I was in junior high and high school to get ready for the speed of the game. So I owe a lot to Shaq Harris. Yeah, James Shaq awesome. Harris. Well, when you think about it, guys, and I, I, I love Shaq Harris. I can remember him when I was getting drafted. He was a scout. He's been mm -hmm. around the game for a long yeah. time. When you made that transition from college to pros, I know walking into the first locker room, I'm like, okay, I got to compete. I'm in the New Orleans Saints locker room with Ricky Jackson, Sam Mills. You know, I got, I know I'm going to have to compete every day. What was that like for both of you guys as you step into that NFL locker room from college? But I, I think I mean, that's probably the tough part. Speed of the game is real. Yeah, yeah it's, it's real. real. Yeah, it's it's real. But I, went, I went out to, to mini, uh, mini camp, rookie camp we had. Yeah. And 
I was kind of torturing him in rookie camp. I was torturing him. I think Parcells was like, I got to see how good this guy is. So he called in some of the backups that were on the team before. And I remember throwing an out route. This is a five-yard out route. We've hit that pass many times before. And I threw it, and I was like, why is the DB jumping on the pass? <laughs> and he just missed. And I was like, if I didn't throw a perfect ball, it was pick six. So I said, oh, these dudes is fast. You got to make sure yeah. throws. And, you know, just had that, that, that confidence. So I think a lot of times – the hardest part about my rookie year was I was coming from being the, the player of the year, one double yeah. A player of the year, black college player of the year, and then everybody but me knows I got to sit the bench. Because mm -hmm. I was like, oh. I was like, nah, I'm going at it. And then, but the reality of the business was I was going to sit the bench, yeah. period, until somebody got hurt. It's hard so to swallow. That's a hard to swallow. Yeah, yeah. coming from the same circumstances. He went high. And went into yeah. Detroit. But I'm getting urged by the offensive coordinator. And, and you think it's a perfect hold out. He's telling, were, he's telling me to shoot. hold out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's telling me to hold out because you know this offense because they were running the run and shoot in Detroit. Yeah. Needless to say, he was setting me up the whole time because – they weren't planning on playing me as a rookie. Mm. And you go in there, matter of fact, the first game of the regular season, I walk in the locker room thinking, hey, I'm getting ready to suit up. There's no uniform in my life. I'm like, equipment manager telling me, hey, you're down this week. What the hell does down mean? Yeah, I don't yeah. know what down yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah where I'm from, yeah, yeah, you're on a team, you you suit up. I had no idea what that meant. Yeah. I was deactive the first week of, of, uh, of my rookie year. But Man. you go in and you just start to uh, to compete. And all that's, that's all really you ask for it's a level playing field yeah. go in and compete and just let the let the chips fall as they may i don't know that that really happened for me uh in my years in detroit mm -hmm. it, it, you know that's an interesting thing because i know a lot of guys that were in detroit mm -hmm. and they've said the same thing but as you look at it how did you guys both make the transition played in the nfl and we all know no one plays as long as they want to <laughs> no you matter if you play 20 exactly years, right. if you play 10 years, if you play two years. But what made you say, I want to go and call games and work on that crowd? Because that's not an easy thing to transition to, as we all know. Well, I'll let a guy remain nameless, but I'd taken my car on a Saturday to have his service. And I was watching an Oklahoma State game, and a guy was calling a game. <clears throat> and I was sitting there, and I just left my office to do it. I had a whole totally different uh, secondary career, so to speak, doing uh, writing apps and programs through Lotus Notes and mm -hmm. uh, uh, just really successful in what we were doing. And when I saw it, I was like, I can do that. Yeah. And uh, because of his lack of engaging into the game, I knew that was something I could do. Got back to my office and I started making phone calls mm -hmm. and trying to put myself in a position to do exactly what it is that I'm doing today and 20 years later, knock on wood, I'm, I'm still going and still rolling at it. Yeah. What about I you, think, Jay? I mean, there's no roadmap for how you get into this yeah, business. Yeah. You know, you got to know some people and yeah. take advantage of the opportunity. I, mine almost was a humbug. I, um, I, I, Howard Homecoming, yeah. and they said, oh, it's Howard Homecoming, you're going to be in town doing an off week? I said, sure. You know, I tried. So I went out there and was a sideline reporter. and. It's like, oh, I know this at like the back of my hand, but I didn't study. And I'd say I was terrible. <laughs> I was terrible. I mean, I was so bad, yeah. I was embarrassed. Yeah. I thought, you know, I was doing a good job. And then I went and watched it, and I said, oh, my goodness. But when my coach called me and said, you know what? My wife saw something there. She said, you know what? You got a presence there. There may be something there if you work at it. So I went to ask the guy, like, I called him up and said, I'm sorry about my performance. I will study. I'll have it bound. Next year, give me another shot. Next year, give me another shot. He was like, I don't know, Jay. <laughs> I mean, this is the Howard game. Yeah. So I was that big. So I don't know. And then the next year I came and did it, and I prepared for it. I studied. And then he said, I've never seen anybody improve so much from one year to the yeah. next year. Yeah. Keep working at that. And you, well, you that's, the, that's the thing about it. We all know that. <clears throat> How many guys have we seen in our time in this business together that come in, you, you get in the door based on name recognition? Mm -hmm. But if you study, you stay. Yeah. How many have we seen that didn't study and try to just do it on what they knew? And the next year, even one year in, they're not back. Yeah. So yeah. that's the, the, the I guess the great equalizer, whatever it is you want to you want to call it, is just being prepared like anything else that you've ever done. It's like when we play football. You yeah. go out and have your best games when you prepare the best. Well, this is no different. And you've got to prepare. And it's not like I think you know, and you know this too, Buck. You can step in. It's like. 
when when you're good at your job and you study, you make it look a whole lot easier than yeah. it is. Yeah. And when other athletes get there, like, how did you do that? I can't take yeah. somebody talking in my ear. I can't. Say, did you study? Did you prepare? Like I know the game plan almost like I'm playing. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's what it is. So I think it's a compliment when the longevity we've had, because yeah. I've had many people say I tried to do it and I, you know, I couldn't handle it. Yep. Yeah. One year in and they're looking for the. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna take a break, chopping it up with Buck. We'll be right back. Really, y'all don't know this y'all in danger. I'm a threat. I'm Andre Ware, and I'm privileged to be chopping it up with Buck. This is the Vintage Whiskey and Cigar Bar. We're in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've got Jay Howard, Jay Walker. That's, that's, what, that's what Bill Parcells used to call yeah, me. Jay, yeah. Howard, <laughs> Jay Walker from Howard <laughs> HU and Andre Ware. The high uh, from University of Houston. I call them high. I call them high. <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, and, and the good thing is, who have been your mentors in the the broadcasting industry? I mean, just like you, like all of us have had people mm-hmm. that have kind of helped us along the way. Um, I can remember when I first started, Doc Walker. Yeah, a former Doc UCLA, you know, UCLA guy, yeah. Terry Donahue said, "Hey, you need to talk to Doc Walker. I think you know you guys are similar. Y'all like to talk." But he also said, "You know, I want to set you up with Coach Vermeil because Dick Vermeil was doing it. So I got my boards from Dick, and I just started. So did I. Yeah, I just started talking. So to did him. I. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Dick Vermeil had this big old board, Jay, and I got it. My home. Yeah, and I used to use that because we, we were talking about it today in the yeah. seminar about handwriting yeah. our own boards. Right? That's mm-hmm. who I got the." Uh, the board from to start handwriting was Dick Vermeil. He sent it to me, started handwriting on it, and uh, got a bunch of boards printed out. Yeah, still have them under my uh, my desk in my office to this day. If I ever decide to go back to handwriting, I'm ready. I still have a box of them. You know, now he's a pro football Hall of Fame yeah. coach, Dick Vermeil. But yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting who passed things down. What about what about you, Jeff? I'm gonna brag on Howard. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't take much for me to brag on Howard. But going to Howard. Uh, playing in Washington D.C. in the media market, yeah. so like George Michael, you know, sports machine oh, was yeah, down yeah. the street. So I was on the sports machine, which was rolling, yeah. and then uh, James Brown, you know, mm-hmm. being in D.C. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I would call him once a year. Yeah. Gus Johnson oh. went to Howard, so Gus would do it. Uh, we got Glenn Harris, who's a local legend there. So Howard, you know, the media thing was big there. You know, the George Johnson. I don't know if you remember George Johnson called games for BET, but those guys would always have their eye on me. You know, yeah. JB when James Brown called, said. I saw you call a game the other day. You're pretty good. Mm-hmm. I was like, really? And then when Gus Johnson, he'll say, man, I saw you call a baseball game like you like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's good. So I think the HBCU network really embraced yeah. me. Those guys there in particular. Yeah, for, for, me, for me, it was, it was easy. Um, guy that went to the University of Houston, one of the best – I think Voice is one of the best at doing it, Jim Nance. Jim Nance. Yeah. That was, that's what I really leaned yeah. heavy on uh, early on. He kind of showed me the ropes about putting tapes together and hiring an agent and, you know, this, that, and the other. And then Spencer Tillman helped me out a lot as well. Yeah. He actually gave me all the notes and packages that we get, how he kept all that stuff, and just dumped it. Hey, go through, find nuggets. Yeah. Uh, we'd meet for lunch, and I'd have to show him what nuggets I found that I would use in a game, even though I'm not calling one. Uh-huh. But that was the prep leading in to the actual audition. So it was yeah, two, two pretty good heavy hitters. Yeah. We're going to take a break, chopping it up with Buck. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone. I'm Giannis from the Vintage Whiskey and Cigar Bar here in Charlotte, North Carolina. The guys from Chopping Up with Buck had a great time here tonight. <laughs> Heisman Trophy winner and ESPN analyst Andre Ware and former NFL QB and ESPN analyst Jay Walker had an awesome time here tonight so you will too so come on down to the vintage here in Charlotte North Carolina
Yo, what's up? This your boy, Jay Skywalker from Howard University. H-U, you know. And right now, we're chopping it up with Buck. Welcome back to Chopping It Up with Buck. We're at the Vintage Whiskey and Cigar Bar. I'd like to thank Giannis, who owns the place, runs the place, and gave us some really nice so the Sensia cigars, I mean, they are really, really good. really good, nice. If you're in Charlotte, you need to come over to 215 East Worthington Avenue. Great spot. Even before I got a chance to do this, I would come here. I <laughs> always miss Giannis, but I'm happy to have you guys. I told you it'd be good to come in tonight. He does specials. He's going he's gonna to tell you more. I mean, he's got a lot of membership opportunities, but a great place to come and hang out. And nice spot. It's a real nice spot. Yeah, yeah. It's a really nice spot. So guys, as you, as, as you guys were talking about mentors, what have you seen with the game and who are, who are some of the kids that reach out to you? I mean, I, I know Dre, I was watching the game where you were calling, um, you know, the kid from UCLA who had an opportunity to play and you were talking about him and I'm watching the game, watching him, watching you and Jay, I know, who are some of these young guys that come and kind of seek counsel as well? For me, I kind of, it's a natural bond because I cover more HBCU sports than anybody. So all the guys going to the next level from HBCUs, like we're a small fraternity. So in recent years, it's been Tariq Cohen, who played North Carolina a and yeah. yeah. uh, Darius Shaq Leonard, you know, who everybody's yeah. proud of him. South Carolina State also, NFL Rookie of the Year. Uh, those guys, Jacoby Durant, who just got drafted. So I make it a point to like, every one of those guys, they have my phone number, they can reach out to me, they call me. We talk, I ask for favors from them, they'll do it. They're good guys. So I think that's been my community in terms of mentorship. Yeah, it's it's for me, it's more the same. More guys that have gone to the University of Houston, yep. uh, getting ready or preparing themselves. I speak with the captains every year, every year before the season starts and we try to I try to keep in touch and just check in on them. You know, they may an injury or something like that that mm -hmm that happens during the course of a year that, you know, you can't help it, it happens. But you want to check in and make sure that, that uh, they're doing well and they're on, they stay on the right track. Yeah, that was Chase Griffin I was thinking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were calling the game when he got an opportunity to play. Who are a couple of the young quarterbacks in the NFL? that you kind of watch. I know you call Texans games, you keep in yeah. touch with the NFL yeah. game, I do as well. Who are a couple of the guys that you see that have that, that capability, that I, next level? I mean, it's a, uh, in terms, in terms of guys I like to watch, you know, like yeah, about yeah. who I like to watch. Like, I'm still a Rodgers guy. You know, Aaron Rodgers, to me, he's still like, hanging at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mahomes does some special stuff. <laughs> but that's not, but I think, you know, for me, purely like playing the position at the highest level, like, I just, I like to see what Rodgers does next. That's that's my guy. Yeah, I keep an eye on what Lamar Jackson Lamar, yeah, every man. single week. See, I couldn't run like that. So. Yeah, <laughs> Freakishly talented, yeah. both throwing and running. The yeah. first guy I saw, and when you're outside and you're throwing a ball, you you could you could get a ball to whistle when the wind's blowing. He was the first guy I saw. I covered his pro day that they were inside in the bubble and the ball was whistling. Ooh, no wind, man. and that's when you know it's tight yes. and it's coming. And then you mix that with his ability to pull it down. Yeah. That's who that's who I would pay money to go see if I was if I had to go pay to watch a game. I want to see a caliber it, guy like you that. know well you know what it's, it's, it's cold blooded because we talk about his pro day it made me think about it and I don't know how he does it but Kyler Murray yeah, yeah he I mean it. he normally you know the winner too us quarterbacks are the kind of men we got those guns mm -hmm. I don't worry about a smaller dude having a gun like yeah. that. He got a gun. Yeah, he can he's play like, and it's tight. It's big arm to be that was small and can run. Played at a and M, who got yeah. hurt? He was a multi-type player of football. Hurt his ankle. Baseball, hurt his ankle injury. Tore his ankle up. Yeah. He was a uh, when they had that wrecking crew and everybody yeah. else. Yeah. His daddy was a hell of a player, but yeah, he does. He does I, some special things. He does. I cover Kyler as a baseball player. Yeah, yeah. as a Texas yeah. A&M playing, and they're like, he's a great football player too. I was like, okay, you know, I thought he was a smaller guy. He 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 doesn't. You know, I always tell kids, you only too small when you're not good enough. Yeah, that's right. And he's always been good enough and great. I mean, one of the best players in Texas history. Great baseball player. Yeah. Luke obviously won, for what, four state championships at Allen High yeah. School in Dallas and then went on to, to Oklahoma won the Heisman. Yeah. And then yeah. now he's you know, getting Arizona in the playoffs. It should be there yeah. uh, pretty much every yeah. year going They got to give a shout out to off the field. Yeah. Nobody does it better than Russ. Yeah. 
Russell Wilson. And, and, and I call, yeah. I'll tell you this, I called Russell's games when he was at North Carolina NC State. State yeah. And I, 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 Dana Bible, who I know pretty well, was, was telling me, he said, hey, this guy, when he gets a chance, he's going to be special. And I kept telling mm-hmm. people in the barbershop, you know, the barbershop yeah. does the barometer <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. BS. Yeah. Yeah. And the cats were like, Russell Wilson. I'm like, I'm telling you. But when I shook his hand, he got big hands, long levers, and he yeah. played multiple sports. Yep. That's the other thing that I want to ask you guys. We all play multiple sports. All the guys you guys are talking right. about play multiple sports. Why do coaches force kids to only play one sport and not let them play at least a couple Aaron, to get those skills? I think it's more – I think that happens mm-hmm. on the youth level. Mm-hmm. And so you're dealing with – uh, guys that didn't play multiple sports and they think you have to specialize at an early age. Now, I make sure that my son's playing more than one because I don't want to burn him out in one. Mm-hmm. And I want him to get the benefit of hand and eye coordination from playing one speed from the other, mm-hmm. the different attributes that, that fit whatever sport that he wants to uh, that he wants to engage in. Yeah. So you go from there. Hey man, <laughs> I, I told him I'm, I'm here doing a podcast at your spot, Vintage, and we on the air right now. And I said, Oh, Deuce is big time me now. He don't want to pick up, but at least you called back. I said the bites are gonna call back. But how you doing, man? Say what up to our buckle and Andre Ware. To Antoine. What's going on, man? <laughs> Uh, hey, oh, I know retirement treat you good. I'll call you when we finish this up, man. All right, Bison. <laughs> That's bison, man. <laughs> See, you, know, you guys, can you call him Bison at your, at, at, uh, from Howard? Yeah, you, you call, call him Cougar. You call him Cougar. They went and played with you. Okay, okay. What What do you miss the most about? Let me, let me, let me go to that answer. Because my son you know, plays two sports. You know, he yeah, plays yeah, basketball yeah. lacrosse. And yeah. what I've learned is, Every coach likes multi-sport athletes till he can't be there to make your game. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. I got to choose a basketball tournament, a lacrosse tournament. Oh, man, I love he playing lacrosse, but he's not going to be here. No, I need him here. Yeah. And lacrosse, so as a dad, I think more parents got to get involved and say, I'm going to pick what's best for him. Yeah. He can't make 100%. I tell him he's not going to be 100% all your terms. Certain years he may be, but, you know, this, these coaches are divided. I had the same thing happen with my son. He uh, plays baseball and basketball. <laughs> And there's a huge basketball tournament in San Antonio, and they had a so-so tournament in baseball. Well, I made the de- well, I made the decision to let him choose, and he initially said baseball. But morning of, I'm getting ready to drive to San Antonio. He's all teary-eyed and wanting to go with me. He's just a pack of bag. I called his coach. I'm like, he won't be there today. Yeah. And now, and same thing with him. Well, you know, he's one. Of, he's our best pitcher. In this <laughs> but he just won't. Have, you got to make it without him this weekend. Yeah, yeah, I'll be the bad guy. Be mad at me, not him. Yeah, yeah, that's why I put it on me. Like, hey, I'll be the bad guy. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that. As we have sons and they grow up. Who else? I mean, you guys have coached other kids. You coach your, your own kids. But what is it about coaching that you have taken from what you learned to help those kids that you now coach, mentor, and develop? I just try to do it through life skills and then, and then use examples of coaches that I've, I've worked with or played for. Uh, my high school coach, he, he, everything was about what the game would teach you so that you can transition right. into life right. and be better, and be a better citizen and be and give yourself a chance. And so any young man that I'm working with, his parents know that I've got his best interest. When, they, when they're with me, they're mine. And I love them and I coach them hard and I put my arm around them. But they know that they're going to give me, we're going to put the work in to get, to get better. And so that's the one thing that I learned from my high school coach. It does not take talent to play hard. And so if you just play hard, you're going to make plays. But if you don't give me the effort and you don't know what we're doing, it's going to be tough for you to play for me. <laughs> that's just that's, – and that's, that's the day one speech. That, that is. That is. Yeah. Not too good. I, I never I, – I don't have the patience to coach. Yeah. I always knew that. I don't have the patience to coach. So I'm kind of a – but all my kids are athletes, and so I'm saying the same thing. I just want you to work hard. If I'm going to take time out of my day to get you to practice from four to six, them two hours, leave it all on tape. That's yeah, right, exactly. And then afterwards, I go back to daddy duty. So, but I, I could, I never had the patience of it. I respect the profession. I took so some much. advice from him with my own son, <laughs> yeah. uh, from him with him. Yeah. Exactly, because yeah. his son's older than mine. But he yeah. said two minutes in the car. Yep. After practice is over, after a game, you get two, two minutes. minutes. You got to listen to me for two minutes. Once the two minutes is up, I'm back, 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 yeah. yeah. back to being daddy. And that's worked out, man. That's so. <laughs> really good. Well, 
one of the things too people always ask me what do you most miss the most about football Sundays Sundays and Tuesdays we get paid <laughs> Tuesdays, especially on Tuesdays. The locker room is the one thing that I think. Nothing like the payment is great. Yeah, it's nothing like a locker room. room. But one thing you got that's unique with having you know me and Dre here, like as quarterbacks, there were times I was jealous of other people in the locker room because they could go out and do things we couldn't. Oh hell yeah! You know, Bill Parcells told me. Hey, you're late once as my quarterback, I will cut you. Yeah. He's yeah. like, the rest of the guys, they can do that. So I was like, what? So yeah. I was always the type of, you know, we had to be leaders. We got to be the CEOs when sometimes. So I, example. I, yeah, I wouldn't mind being a worker be every now and then. But but uh, I would say, you know, the, the locker room, the, some of those relationships you make, I, I wouldn't trade those in at all. But, you know, it's a business. It's it some of the stories, just some having fun, oh, cutting man. up in the locker room, whether it's before practice, after practice, yeah. you know, it, that's what you miss about yeah. the game when it's yeah. when it's all said and done. You don't get those back. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. great memories, but you can't relive that in no. in no. any other facet yeah. of life. I, I, I wouldn't mind having one more round in the locker room with John Randall. <laughs> with John Randall, we both were wrestling. He was crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah, man, we were man. wrestling with each other. I'd be like, I'm the million dollar man, and you Virgil. And he's like, I got a million dollars. You don't. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> we go out and uh, you know, some of those guys. Corey Stringer was one probably my favorite yeah. team. Yeah. Big Randall was a good one. Was a good guy. So well, we're yeah. gonna take one more break. Chop it up with Buck. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, I'm Giannis from the Vintage Whiskey and Cigar Bar here in Charlotte, North Carolina. The guys from Chopping Up with Buck had a great time here tonight. <laughs> Heisman Trophy winner and ESPN analyst Andre Ware and former NFL QB and ESPN analyst Jay Walker had an awesome time here tonight so you will too so come on down to the vintage here in Charlotte, North Carolina Heslip Wealth Advisors, our goal is to help small businesses develop quality retirement plans for their employees through our Lunch and Learn seminars. We provide lunch and learning tools to help your company succeed and unmatched customer service. I don't think they running now my pace. Jordan won it. All right, we're back on Chopping It Up with Buck at the Vintage Whiskey and Cigar Bar. Got some great sticks. Go to Humidor. The drinks are good. Giannis will take care of you. Everybody here has been outstanding. And I'm glad to have Jay Walker, Andre Ware. We're down to the two-minute drill now. These guys love this. And I love that because I know I'm going to catch a pass. <laughs> Easy, though. I don't ask any real hard questions. But uh, I'm going to ask you a couple, and I want to hear your, hear your opinion on this. So Meg, this, Megan Thee Stallion or Beyonce? Ooh. <laughs> what mood am I in? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, man, that's, that's a tough one there. He did say he was coming hard, didn't he? <laughs> Megan. So Megan, Megan Thee Stallion. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm six four, man. I'm six four, two three, you know. Beyonce, I'm, 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 I'm a pretty boy. She's five, 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 seven now. Yeah, she, yeah but hold on. <laughs> I don't want to take Jay off, so I may go Megan Thee Stallion. I like Thee Stallion, boy, no doubt. What's in the Spotify or Apple Music? What you listening to now? What is going on what you're listening to right now. I'm all over the place when it comes to jazz. Yeah. I mean right now, contemporary yeah. jazz, anything. Uh, uh, yeah. Pretty much any. Najee yeah. is my favorite. Um, Kirk Whalem from Houston. Kirk Whalem. Paul Hardcastle oh, yeah. is, is more a uh, real contemporary. I, and I listen to it while I'm playing golf. Okay. So we're in the golf cart together. I got the speaker yeah. that mounts and that's, that's just me. It yeah. keeps me mellow. <laughs> no, I got a uh, Kendrick Lamar mm-hmm. and, and Dr. Dre. All right. I don't go wrong. Going back there. West Coast. Yeah, I'm yeah, with you. Yeah, Kendrick Lamar, Dre. And, and, oh. and I just downloaded the, the G-Funk the, era. Yeah. I just downloaded the DJ Quick's greatest hits. Y'all are oh, probably oh, I know exactly. <laughs> Talking, please. DJ Quick, bro. He's a young one. So we got down to we getting we marching down the field. You guys are doing well. Two minute drill, y'all understand. We're getting close. But you gotta find that tight end on the corner route. 
So this question tells you if you got a corner, you got a guy coming up to smash concept, mm-hmm. do you look for the deep guy first or you go to underneath first? I'm just reading the down. <laughs> I'm reading the corner. He, if he doesn't drop off, I'm done. If he drops off, I'm dumping it. If he yeah. takes takes the up rock, I'm going to find the guy going on the corner. Two, two minute drill down a distance. Okay. If I'm trying to keep the drive alive, okay, but so every now and then you got to bait him and have that cornerback stay close, make him think you're taking the hit, yeah, and then I'm going to stick that damn seven seven in route. I love it. <laughs> But you see, I want that seven. You want that seven. <laughs> We're down. We're moving down. What, what you watching now? What you streaming? What's, what's the stream? Yellowstone. Oh, which, which he turned me on. Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Yellowstone is, is uh, I can't wait till it's coming back. Watch it. <laughs> Who's the baby. best character in there? Oh, Rip. We. Rip is Rip. 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 Man. But who has the best lines? The daughter, I can't remember. Oh, the name. That's man, something. That bad. That's something man. Man. You're the trailer park, trailer home. I'm the tornado. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 something else, man. Yeah. Kevin Costner's bad. He played with. And what is the other one? The the uh, spinoff of that? Eighteen oh, eighteen eighteen uh, seventy two. Like, like, yeah. yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's a good show. You know they got they got one coming up again. Uh, nineteen thirty two. Yeah, they got all the ground to yeah. That, that's good TV. So we're marching down. We're in the red zone now. You got to throw it to your tight end. So when you get in this situation, do you want 12 personnel? Or do you want to go uh, 10 and spread everything out? I know you're a run and shoot guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, give me heavy. I go heavy. Go heavy. Go heavy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a guy. But my senior year, my fullback scored 20 touchdowns. Oh, wow. I Ooh. throw the ball 90 yards down the field. He get the you last five. Let him <laughs> That's who I am. Bring it up. Yeah, I, I just believe in, in – uh, Whatever got me there, I'm going to stay in. Gotcha. So yeah. we're marching down the field in four wides in that formation. We get down there. I, mm-hmm. Hey, keep them spread out. Yeah. It's yeah. easier to run the football. It's easier to pass, protect, but because it's essentially man on man up front. Yeah. Uh, uh, Andre, you can put you in the slot, though. Andre will go shotgun on the one yard line, whether it's negative <laughs> no, or positive. No, 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 no. I can't stand shots. I never took a shotgun snap until I was in the league. One thing, too, if you could have dinner with one family member that's gone, who would who would that be? Hmm. My pops. Yeah. yeah, yeah, my mom. Yeah. Yeah. He saw a lot, and I think you know when Dre was going mm-hmm. through with his mom, whatever. I was like, hey, yeah. look at what she got to see you accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 So I got to remind myself all the time. My dad, he was forty-seven when he had me, okay. so he was older. So. He saw, but he never got to see the, the father I became. So God, I wish I yeah, had. Yeah, you, you kind of hit on a nerve there. My mom got to see a lot of him. My dad didn't because my dad passed when I, when he was 31. I was six. Okay. And so okay. Um, I'd love to have had him at my games, yeah, been able yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. kind of bend his ear when it was over, when the games are over. And just from a father's standpoint of you, you kind of doing this thing on the fly. Yeah. Uh, have him around to ask him, bend his ear a little bit on, hey, you know, what'd you do with me in, in this yeah, situation? Yeah, yeah. So I can pass that down to to, uh, to my son. And then have my son have a relationship with his grandfather as well. That would, that would be pretty My sweet. grandparents, of course, but my mom's mom died before when she was 13, so I never got to meet wow. her. Wow. But I heard great stories about yeah. her. I'd love to be able to sit down because she looks like all of my mom's yeah. sisters. And what herself. is it about, like, grandmothers, man? Yeah. Especially <laughs> in the black communities because they're so strong-willed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They hold families together. Yeah. My, I would have the same relationship yeah. with my grandmother. Yeah. We would go fishing, and, that, and I was told, you got an old soul. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I picked it up from her. Oh yeah, doing a lot of fishing and just talking while we're sitting on a pond somewhere. Yeah, well, you know the beautiful thing is my dad's mom showed me where my grandmother, my mom's mom, was buried. So I'd go ride my bike out there when I was in Beaumont, just wow. sit there and talk to her. Yeah, sit there and talk. Well, we scored on that one. Baby. We scored on that <laughs> no, one. No. Up. That's great. Yeah. Good to have my Jay man. Walker from HU. You know, no. <laughs> and Andre Ware from University of Houston. Cool. Yeah, it's been great to have you guys, man. I appreciate it. We are again at the Vintage Whiskey and Cigar Bar. Had a great time, Giannis. Thank you. Thank you for the sticks. Yeah. Thank you for everything. That was our episode of Chopping It Up with Buck. Quarterback edition. Hey everyone, I'm Giannis from the Vintage Whiskey and Cigar Bar here in Charlotte, North Carolina.
The guys from Chopping Up with Buck had a great time here tonight. <laughs> Heisman Trophy winner and ESPN analyst Andre Ware and former NFL QB and ESPN analyst Jay Walker had an awesome time here tonight, so you will too. So come on down to the Vintage here in Charlotte, North Carolina.